On the 30th of July 1967, a group of seven sponge divers were exploring the bottom of Rock Lake within Wisconsin. What they found, however, is more precious than sponge, or indeed golden relics. They would make a discovery so perplexing, some specialists are still struggling to explain it to this day. One of the divers, John Kennedy, stumbled across a large triangular rock formation near the middle of the lake, a structure which towered up from the deep, almost breaching the surface. He estimated that the structure which still existed above the mud was around 20 feet in diameter and around 40 feet from the edge of the lake. John collected several small fragments from around the structure, specimens which would later aid in collaborating their claims. Although rumours of an ancient pyramid existing in the lake had circulated since the 1930s, this was the first time in modern history that evidence had successfully been retrieved. It must be noted, Rock Lake is extremely ancient, and the area that is said to house an ancient pyramid has remained submerged for well over 10,000 years. Due to this geological fact, if it were not for John's physical evidence, the site may have been successfully overlooked by mainstream archaeology. Heated debate regarding John's and other claims from the 30s now raged on for several years, many mainstream archaeologists predictably rejecting the premise that a pyramid of over 10,000 years of age is resting, or more precisely hiding, at the bottom of Rock Lake. They claim some enormous structures lay there. Native American legend records that they were built by an ancient peoples who were driven away during a flood. Although evidence was mounting, skeptics continued to insist that those involved were mistaken. It took a flight by aerial photographer Jack Latournier to silence such rhetoric. According to mainstream academia, the site simply shouldn't exist. Yet it does. It is another valuable relic of our past which tell of a history drenched in antiquity, a history we are slowly unraveling. When an ancient ruin is academically studied, it will often be attributed as the work of a far more recent, already studied, thus previously permitted group placed within known history, often a group simply incapable of such undertakings. Furthermore, not only do many sites hold evidence of a far older yet far more advanced builder having once been responsible for their construction, but such sites can often share characteristics with ancient ruins found far away, features from a said site also found on another continent on the other side of the globe. False doors, for example, found over countless ancient ruins spanning much of the world. This reoccurrence, along with many other similar signature features, are far from mere coincidence and can only be explained by a past, intercontinental, highly capable lost civilization, as we have postulated in the past in regards to many factors indicative of their megalithic legacy. Metal clamps, identified on differing continents, varying in style and composition relative to what was presumably readily available, so although they differ in style, the knowledge of how to create and use such ancient technology had clearly been the work of the same civilization. The pyramids of Uymir, for example, are six rectangular pyramids you would more than likely have never heard of and most certainly would not have been taught of their existence by modern mainstream academia. Built from lava stone without the use of mortar, they are uncannily reminiscent of many structures within the South Americas. They are located in the districts of Chacona, part of the town of Uymer, on the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands, Spain. The structures have been attempted to be dismissed as nothing but 19th century buildings, argued as the byproduct of contemporary agricultural techniques. Yet their infamous shape and the signature building techniques incorporated into said structures are undeniably found elsewhere on Earth. Other pyramids employing the same methods and materials of construction can be found in various sites on Tenerife. In Uymer itself, there were nine pyramids, any yet, regardless of academics attesting to them being no more than a century old. Only six of the pyramids survive to this day. In 1990, adventurer and publisher Thor Heyerdahl 
became aware of the Canarian Pyramids by reading an article written by Francisco Pedron in the Tenerife newspaper Dario de Avisos, detailing the quote, real pyramids of the Canaries. As Heyerdahl had hypothesized a transatlantic link between Egypt and Central America, which is a subtle way of saying a now lost yet once global superpower who once ruled the waves, he became intrigued by the Uymer pyramids and relocated to Tenerife. Heyerdahl hypothesized that the Canarian pyramids formed a temporal and geographical stopping point on voyages between ancient Egypt and the so-called Mayan civilization's ruins, a claim we agree with. Yet we posit that this contact was not between the Egyptians and Mayans, but was one and the same force, a far older, now lost, world-conquering civilization, an ingenious group who not only passed on their wisdom to every corner of the world, but even built in ways we are yet to understand. Unexplainable anomalies litter many ancient ruins to this day. Heyerdahl had predictably initiated a controversy with historians, esoterics, archaeologists, astronomers. Most of mainstream academia staunchly oppose such claims. By suggesting such an hypothesis, which flies in the face of already established paradigms, his research was predictably never pursued further than Heyerdahl personally took it. Yet I feel he succeeded in publishing a ruthlessly honest opinion in regards to the ruins, regardless of what was already apparently established as fact. And along with our research within Bosda Caves, and the similarities, differentiations, and other investigative strategies utilized to support such an argument of a now-lost, world-going super-civilization, we feel the evidence for our case is now all but overwhelming. There are far too many connecting factors to simply claim coincidence, and as the proof of this past civilization's capabilities becomes more apparent, and in turn researched, the closer we become to finally finding these now lost ancestors. It is a pursuit for the truth, which we find highly compelling. Recently, we covered the unusual connections which have been made between the ancient Egyptian civilization and the Australian continent. The strange, yet not often discussed discoveries, such as that of Tutankhamun's vast boomerang collection, the vast and extremely controversial hieroglyphs discovered near Queensland, known as the Gosford Glyphs, locally known for centuries as the Woiwoi Hieroglyphs, which clearly depict the burial ceremony of an Egyptian god the cross-Pacific voyage undertaken, and a pyramid supposedly constructed upon the continent. There is, however, so much more. At Tin Can Bay, the chosen location of this once existing ancient Egyptian pyramid, for some reason, over the last century, a massive cover-up operation has ensued. The pyramid subsequently bulldozed onto a barge and the stone dumped off Fraser Island. The 10 to 12 men who were involved in this lengthy, destructive, and highly criminal task all signed secrecy agreements with the Australian government, agreeing to never tell anyone of their operation to rob Australians and the rest of the world of a truly historical understanding. Many people have researched this destroyed, controversial structure, and through extensive excavations and fact-finding exhibitions, have fortunately confirmed its past existence beyond any doubt. Although other ancient ruins have been found in the area, all have been extensively researched by individuals funded by organizations who would prefer that they arrive at certain conclusions, thus they may have largely been put down as being built in the last 200 years in many academic papers. However, many independent investigators have spent over 20 years attempting to decipher the pyramid's mysterious existence. The pyramid was noted as existing by the very first white explorers to the area. The aboriginal population had been aware of the structure for millennia. During numerous excavations of the Tin Can Bay area, several large stone statues were recovered. It is difficult to deny an attempted suppression of the pyramid's discovery when you are made aware of the fact that out of the five animal statues uncovered at the site, only one survives thanks to being buried within archives at the time of the other statue's disappearances. A creature not native to Australia, 
explaining the presence of ancient Egyptian-style mummification rites once practiced among the Torres Strait Islanders and Cape York Aboriginal tribes, as well as associated rites and beliefs, have also paralleled the same teachings of the religion of Osiris. Although many scholars, funded for many different conclusions, have all attempted to discredit the pyramid as a modern knockoff, this is in staunch rejection of the overwhelming and very real evidence in the form of cultural artifacts, which paint a very different picture of events, events which occurred within antiquity. You have to wonder why a story based entirely in fiction is passed off as the truth. One of our favorite set of artifacts defending a factual account of history have to be the scarab beetles, which, while certain authorities clearly attempt to keep the lid on Egyptian culture within Australia, cannot seem to get away from. These beautiful things just keep being unearthed, the first such artifact which managed to make it to popular attention before disappearing forever was a specimen made of chert, dug up by a workman in 1976. The truth, it appears, is indeed out there. It is just a case of finding it. During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now-named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball, hook, and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost, thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, Sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments, once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking. However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt, but I never imagined it would be here in northeast Scotland that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling.